channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today's Friday and for today's video I have a thrift flip for you. I had some fun grabbing a few items out of my stash that have been there quite some time and giving them makeovers for spring. I used a color I haven't used in quite some time so I hope you guys like it uh, and I hope you enjoy the projects for today. Without further ado, let's get to them. My first project is this beautiful framed piece of art that I've had in my stash in my kitchen for quite a while. It was pretty darn filthy, so I went ahead and gave it a bath first, just using some Windex and some paper towels. And once I had it all clean, I went ahead and taped off the glass with some uh, painter's tape just to keep my mess at a minimum. I really liked this picture and honestly I was really debating on whether or not I even wanted to paint the frame but there were so many little dings and places where the gold had been rubbed off that it really really needed an update. This color is called Old School. This is by DIY. It's a beautiful dark gray and I just picked this color because I thought it would be a nice contrast between uh, the matte that's ivory and then the picture and th this color is in the background of the picture so it'll kind of draw that color out a little bit. So I'm going over this entire frame with two coats of the, the old school, letting it dry completely between coats. And then I did a little test run on the distressing just to see if I really wanted to distress this. And since there is a gold border around the picture, this uh, distressing back to the gold really helped tie that in. So that's why I went ahead and distressed back to some of that gold. Then I flipped it over and cleaned up the back just gave it a good sand making sure that it was all nice and clean wiped it down with a damp shop towel just to make sure it looked nice flipped it back over and then it was time to seal my paint for this I am using wax. This is DIY's clear wax. Wax is generally my go-to finish for the DIY paints. I just like the matte finish that it gives and I love the soft feel of wax over the DIY paint. Once I had a good layer of the clear wax down and I had wiped off the excess with a shop towel, I did go ahead and go over this with black wax. This is DIY's black wax. This helped really kind of darken the old school just a little bit into almost a black, but just not quite. Uh, and then it also helped antique the gold just a little bit, which was nice. And I just love the effect of this uh, black wax over these super dark colors like this. It just makes them look rich and beautiful. And I absolutely love how this turned out. Once I was done putting on my wax, which I did thin with a little bit of mineral spirits and wiping back the excess with a shop towel, it was time to remove my tape and just clean up any mess that I had left back or left behind with the paint. And then this frame is done. I'm really glad I chose to paint it. I love how it came out and I hope you guys do too. So for project two, I grabbed two more frames out of my stash. These I've had again for a long time. And the white one, I decided to go ahead and paint with Sweet Pick and Smoke paint in Just Peachy. This is a beautiful, beautiful peach color. And I absolutely love it for spring. And I am giving the white frame, I ended up having to give this three coats of the Just Peachy. I did use Extra Bond in my paint. I used the recommended amount and I used it in all three coats. And then on the gray frame, I am going over that with two coats of DIY's Aviary. 
Once both my coats or all of my coats of paint were completely dry, it was time to seal my pieces. And again, for that, I'm starting out with a coat of DIY's clear wax, just using a soft brush to brush that on and then wiping back the excess with a shop towel. And for these, I decided to go over them with dark wax just to bring out all of that beautiful detail in these frames without actually having to distress anything back to the original uh, gray and white colors. Once I had finished waxing the just peachy frame, I was able to start on the aviary frame and the same thing applied, just applying that clear wax uh, over the aviary paint with my soft brush and then wiping back the excess very carefully uh, with my dry shop towel. And the reason I had to be very careful is that if you brush or you rub too hard, you run the risk of accidentally distressing your piece back to the original paint. And I didn't really want to do too much of that. So once I was done again with the clear wax onto the dark wax and for this I did kind of dab the dark wax off just because I found that if I rubbed too hard I was going right back into that gray and once I was finished with that I set these frames aside so that I could move on to my next step. Now the inside of the small frame didn't have any kind of cardboard or anything like that so I cut out a matching piece of uh, watercolor paper to go in the frame and then I am painting both the, the uh, watercolor paper and the piece of cardboard out of the green frame uh, with DIY's crinoline and this is just going to give me a lovely uh, neutral ivory background for what I'm going to be doing next. Now I really wanted a little bit of extra pizzazz I guess on the backgrounds so I went ahead and grabbed this gorgeous stencil this is by Redesign with Prima it's called Renata and I am using their decor wax in Eternal and a makeup sponge and I am just pouncing uh, some of that decor wax over the stencil to get a beautiful uh, stenciled effect over the crinoline paint. So I did the large one first and then kind of centered one of the designs over the small piece and then did the same thing with that, just pouncing that gold wax into the stencil uh, to give a nice impression. I just wanted to show you really quick how I clean my stencils. I am I take my uh, wax brush with some mineral spirits and I just lay that over a paper towel, wash them off really well, and then wipe them dry with a shop towel, just being very careful not to uh, break any of the fine details in my stencil. Then I went ahead and used a spray sealer to seal these guys, mainly because I was going to be using a transfer over them and I didn't want to try and stick the transfer down to wax. So I figured this would be a good barrier between the wax and my transfer. This gorgeous transfer set it is called Bright Meadow. It's another one by Redesign with Prima. And the reason I chose this is because if you look closely, you can see that there are some beautiful peach colored flowers in this, which is wonderful to go with the just peachy that I chose for the smaller frame. And there's also some greenery that ties in the aviary color that I chose for the green frame. I love transfers because they are beautiful and they're really easy to use. All you have to do is just lay it down where you want it and then rub with a transfer stick and pull that piece of vellum back. You just need to be a little bit patient and if you do end up pulling up a little piece of your transfer, just make sure to lay it back down right away and re-rub that area so that it adheres to your piece. Once you're done, you just burnish it in either with your hand or your fingers or most commonly uh, a piece of the vellum and burnishing is just taking that piece of vellum and rubbing it over your transfers to make sure that they're well adhered to your piece. Once I had the big transfer on the backing for the green picture, I cut out some of the smaller flowers from the other sheet in the transfer set and I just worked and uh, played with them and figured out exactly how I wanted to arrange them on uh, the backer for this smaller frame. 
So one by one, I just layered them down. I cut little bits off if they were too big. And I just used that transfer stick to rub them down into my paint or onto the top of another transfer and then uh, burnish them in with my finger. So just the nice thing about these transfers is they can be layered. So you can put one on top of another uh, to make, to create a really beautiful layered effect with them. Uh, they're just really, like I said, super easy to use and just add such a beautiful touch to a piece. Then it's time to clean up my glass and put my frames back together again. So I'm just using some Windex and some chop towels, making sure that glass is nice and clean, and then putting everything back together and closing up the frames. I'm always so excited to do this step because I get to see if all of my hard work paid off and I actually like what I've created. Thank goodness I did. So that's always a good thing. Now, I really thought I was done at this point, but when I flipped them over I thought a little bit of gold on the detail of these pieces would be nice to tie in the gold that I used on the backer and so I went over the detail with just a little bit more of that eternal gold wax by redesign with Prima. I'm super happy with the end result of these frames I think they turned out great. My third and final project is this three drawer little box that I've had sitting actually on my front counter. I don't know when I moved it there, uh, but it just become a little catch all as it has sat there. So I decided, you know what, I really need to finish that up and do something with it. So I grabbed it. I had forgotten that these little pieces were uh, just floating around in one of the drawers. So I added some uh, tight bond quick and thick and glued them back down. Then I took it to my sink and I actually actually just sprayed out everything just to get it nice and clean and this is me drying it back off with a shop towel. I decided to go ahead and go with Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in the color Just Peachy to go with that smaller frame that I had just finished for this box. So I am giving this whole thing three coats of Just Peachy. Um, I did, again, use Extra Bond in all three coats. And I am going over it, uh, the top, the bottom, the back, and the sides with that uh, Just Peachy paint. Now, I did not want to have to try and paint the inside of this little box, so I did my best to keep things clean as I went along, just using a shop towel once in a while to make sure that I had nice clean edges on all of my surfaces. Then I grabbed the drawers and I gave the sides each a few coats of the Just Peachy as well. And I don't know what I was thinking here, why I didn't paint that little strip along the front. You'll see uh, just a, a little bit later that I actually do go back and paint that part of these drawers with the Just Peachy paint. Um, I just, I don't know what was going on in my head at that point, but uh, maybe I was just tired. I don't know. Anyway, so I painted the sides of each of the drawers and I also painted the rim all the way around of each of the drawers too with the Just Peachy. Once I had the drawers painted with the Just Peachy, I had left the fronts, see there I am painting that, that little strip on all the drawers, but I had left the fronts uh, to paint white because I am going to be uh, using decoupage paper on these. So I'm using two coats of white swan on the fronts of all of the drawers. You can see here I'm going over this a second time with that Just Peachy paint. You can see what a difference it makes just between that first coat and the second. So here it is all painted and ready for the next step. Now, if you've ever used milk paint, it does have a tendency to leave little chunks of paint behind sometimes, and I wanted my surfaces nice and smooth, so I just took some 220 grit sandpaper, cleaned up some edges, and just smoothed out my paint really well. And I also did the fronts of the drawers, just making sure that no chunks or uh, raised areas were on any of those either.
and I just cleaned up the sanding dust with a damp shop towel and I did end up flipping the drawers over and going around the bottom just to make sure I didn't have any uh, runs of paint that had gone around onto the bottom of the drawers and there were also a couple speckles of milk paint on them so I uh, sanded those clean as well. Then I cut out a piece of decoupage paper to go over the entire front of this, even though I'm only going to be sticking it down to the drawers. This paper is called Peach Damask. It's by Redesign with Prima, and I thought it would be the perfect complement to the beautiful Just Peachy color. So I laid my paper down, held it in place, went over one of the drawers with uh, DIY's liquid patina, and then pushed my uh, paper down into that liquid patina, and then went over it with a second coat. Once I had the first drawer down, I did the same thing with the second drawer, just lifting that paper back and adding that liquid patina to the door face and then laying the paper back down, smoothing it out, and then going over it with the second coat of liquid patina. Once I had all three drawers done, I set it aside to dry thoroughly uh, before I moved on to the next step. Next, it was time to get my drawers back out so that I could sand off the excess decoupage paper. So I very carefully cut them out with a box knife and my scissors and then just laid them aside while I grabbed some sandpaper. Now the key here is you do want to make darn sure that your decoupage medium is completely dry before you try and sand off your excess paper or you'll end up just tearing it and making a real mess. So I'm using 150 grit sandpaper here and I'm just using a downward sweeping motion just going slowly and carefully around each of the drawers and sanding the excess paper off of each drawer. Next, I decided the top of the box really needed a little bit of pizzazz, so I grabbed that same stencil by Redesign with Prima called Renata and my gold decor wax, and again, I am just pouncing that decor wax onto the stencil until I have a nice image on the top of my box. Now, once I finished my stencil, I realized I'd kind of done things a little backwards. I should have waited until I had sealed my paint to do this. So I ended up going over the stencil with that same matte spray. And the reason I did that is because if I would have put the uh, clear oil wax on the top on the stencil, it would have washed it away. So I needed to seal it uh, to protect it from the clear oil wax. Once the spray was dry, I went over the entire piece with a coat of a Sweet Pickens oil wax in clear. I did the inside of the drawers and the back of the drawers as well as all the painted surfaces because oil wax is a wonderful uh, conditioner and sealer for raw wood as well as the paint. Once it had sat on the surfaces for about 15 minutes, I came back in with a dry shop towel and wiped everything down really, really well, making sure that I got all of the excess wax wiped off of my piece. Now, as a final step, I had ordered these little file cabinet label uh, holders ages ago and I had ordered them basically just for this piece and I had to hunt around because I'd been so long I forgot where I put them. So I laid one in the center of each drawer and I used my drill to drill a little pilot hole for each of the screws and then I screwed them in with my little uh, Phillips screwdriver that I have on hand. I think these add so much character to the front of this little box. I'm so glad I found them in my messy, messy kitchen, and I think they were the perfect touch. Absolutely love how this little box came out, and I hope you guys do too.
liked my projects for today. And if you did and you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. And then don't forget to drop a comment below and let me know which of the projects your favorite was. Uh, I did want to mention before I forget, the winner of the knob poll ended up being knob A. So that is the one that is now on the cabinet and will stay there until it is sold. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Uh, and then for Tuesday's video, we are planning on going on a junk run on Sunday out to the Goodwill bins. So I'm hopeful that I will actually have a thrift haul to show you guys. We'll see. Uh, if not, I will come up with a plan B. So please join me on Tuesday for whatever I come up with and I hope to see you guys there. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and I will see you on Tuesday. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.